Hi, assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Thank you for visiting my channel again. Abdurrahim here with you. So we are continuing our mitral stenosis topic and I was explaining you the methods to quantify mitral stenosis. So uh, we are done with the two main methods. Okay, now I will uh, two, three more methods left which helps us to quantify mitral stenosis. Okay, but they are not as lengthy as the others were. Okay, so we will finish them today, inshallah, and then from the next vlog we will move on to the treatment side not very deep because that's the most of the doctors thing but um, just to see what is microwave balloon and these things so in today's vlog what i'm going to show is the microwave gradients how we can uh, get um, like microwave area by continuity equation pisa method and there is another thing we call it microwave resistance okay first i'll give you the hints and then i'll show you how we do it on to the slides so microwave gradients they are easy to get you just go into the four chamber view put cw on the microwave or sometimes even pw can help you as well so you just get a gradient okay but then you need to take care how you are going to measure it okay don't get the hairy parts always get the doppler you know which is the dense part of the doppler and then the common mistake i have seen is that some of the time people exceeds the uh, the cycle like they go beyond to the dash they, they they go into the systole when they are measuring it okay they can easily see sometimes mitral regurgitation is starting from here and they are measuring mitral stenosis still here we already know that the mitral valve is already shut here so you need to shut your signal here because continuous signal sometimes gives you a little bit more okay uh, i'll try to show you an example as well so this is the one but Again, I will tell you that uh, gradients at the moment, the guidelines, they don't recommend to go towards the gradient a lot. This is a predictor which gives us information about the mitral stenosis, but doesn't use to really quanti uh, in quantify things. Okay, so it helps you like, okay, the gradient is this one. There is a criteria like mean gradient less than 5 is mild, 5 to 10 moderate and greater than 10 is called severe. But it is influenced by hemodynamic and blood flows so you know for example MR will give you more gradients the tachycardia will give you more gradients by the way if you are going to report gradients in your study you uh, in your report you need to mention about the heart rate whenever you are going to mention the gradients of mitral stenosis you need to write the heart rate because heart rate changes the gradients a lot okay tachycardia increases the gradients okay so this is the things about the gradients I will show you how we can get it and uh, what are the important things we need to look for into the slides and then the continuity equation okay but what is in continuity equation that what comes in goes out okay so like mitral valve stroke volume is equal to LVOT stroke volume so mitral valve stroke volume once you put it into, into the formula it says like um, mitral valve VTI into mitral valve area is equal to LVOT VTI into LVOT area so you keep the mitral valve area on the one side and then you can divide the mitral valve VTI with the LVOT stroke volume and you will get the mitral valve area. So this is the continuity equation. Again, you can, it's not reliable in, in patients when there is a significant MR or significant AR, but this is a way you need to do it. You know how you should be performing it. And the next, I will show you as well. So the next thing is the PISA method. PISA is not highly recommended and uh, people don't use PISA method for the stenosis point of view and the guidelines also don't say to use PISA method. Today I'm just going to show you the formula and how we can do it in mitral stenosis. Okay. So the next one is the, there is another thing we call it mitral valve resistance. Okay. It is also one thing which even I never use it in my life, but we need to know it if we are sonographers, we need to do it. So it doesn't give you any additional information and uh, you know, it's also flow dependent. Initially it was said that it's less flow dependent, but it's not confirmed. And um, then it doesn't give you a lot other information than valve area and there is no validation like what is mild, moderate, severe. There is a formula for it. I will show you in my, in my slides. Okay, so let's come to the slides now. I will explain you what I uh, told you now, and then we'll see them in the slides as well. So from today, we'll be done with our um, uh, mitral stenosis quantification. In the next vlog, I will try to prepare a vlog for you for mitral valve balloon, 
what is the criteria for mitral valve balloon, how we are going to do the mitral valve balloon, and how we are going to assess the mitral valve area after the balloon. Okay, that would that would that's inshallah be our next vlog. Okay, let's move on to the slides now. Okay, here you are. So uh, pressure gradients, how we can get them, uh, you will get them in apical windows. Okay, it's it's easy to get because you are very much aligned to the mitral valve. Okay, you can use CW, PW, that's the same. You can measure the maximum and mean gradient when you will do the, uh, you know, once you will trace the signal, you will do the VTI and you will get this peak and mean gradient. It's mainly depend, it, it uses the Bernoulli equation. So it's derived from cross mitral curve, heart rate to be mentioned, uh, as I told you, and CD to identify eccentric mitral regurgitation. And you can use the continuous wave Doppler if there is any eccentric mitral regurgitation as well. So this is how you are going to see a jet. You see, this is MS jet. And you see, it, it, the, the one who is measuring doesn't start from here. It starts from here, okay? Uh, unfortunately, we can't see the ECG here very well, but anyway, so you will start because we know that MR signal is still here, okay? So MR signal starts from here and finishes here, okay? So you are going to start after the MR signal here, okay? You are not going to take these hairy parts in. You just get the signal, okay, trace it fully, done here. If you come onto the, this signal, you see, this signal is finishing somewhere here. Okay, but MR is starting from here. So you need to shut your signal here. Okay, don't go beyond this. You can use PW, it will translate you better. Okay, because uh, PW shuts it where it where the mitral valve closes. So you get this peak gradient and mean gradient. This is what we need. Okay, uh, criteria, I already told you that what are the criteria. And um, these are the important things we need to keep in mind that maximal gradient influenced by LA compliance and LV diastolic function. Okay, that's fine. In atrial fibrillation, uh, they mentioned five, I would say we should be taking at least 10 and uh, for different RR variations and we should get the average. Mitral valve gradient depends on the heart rate as I told you, cardiac output and associated MR, that's fine. Tachycardia, increased cardiac output and associated MR overestimates gradient, okay? So you just keep in mind, maximal gradient is markedly affected. So maximum gradient is mostly very much affected. So that's why maximum gradient, almost nobody use it, okay? They mainly use the mean gradient. And you uh, you know that I told you the, the thing that we use mean gradients mainly for, for the guidelines and for these things as well. So then we move on to our next thing, which is continuity equation. Okay, so what is continuity equation? I already told you that uh, what comes in like mitral valve stroke volume is equal to aortic valve. Like whatever is coming from mitral valve will go through the aortic valve or the LVOT. So you use the uh, formula mitral valve area into mitral valve VTI is equal to aortic valve area or LVOT area into LVOT VTI, okay? So these two you already know, LVOT area and LVOT VTI, you can get through the um, LVOT diameter, LVOT area and then LVOT VTI. You can get the mitral valve VTI when you are getting the uh, signal of the um, gradients, you will get the VTI as well. So you get the VTI. So just leave this one here and take this one to the other side of the equation, okay? So how it will be? Mitral valve area is equal to LVOT area into LVOT VTI divided by mitral valve VTI and then you will get the area easily, okay? Next thing is PISA. As uh, I explained you about the PISA already, I, I'm not going to, towards the details of it. I'll just tell you the formula. So the formula is um, PISA is equal to 2 pi r square into 8 divided by 180, okay? This is the angle of the, A is the angle of your mitral valve leaflet opening. So you zoom, this is how you are going to use it. You need to uplift, upshift the baseline, okay, to get the aliasing velocity, measure the radius. You need to measure the radius where I'll show you the radius, how you are going to measure it. Measure the angle formed by the mitral leaflets, okay. But they say if you use an angle of 100, it's gonna work for you well in the mitral stenosis patient, okay. So this is how you are going to measure the 
uh, radius. I think this is, I would say this is slightly an overestimation. I would take it like here because the color is going till here. But anyway, this is how you are going to do it. Okay. This is the maximum velocity. You are going to take the maximum velocity and this will be your formula. Okay. Short formula. You can use this one as a short formula. Okay. It cannot, it can be used in the presence of significant MR, AR, differentiating heart rhythms, not affected by LA, LV compliance. Uh, but the main thing of this is that it's, you know, angle dependent angle is an issue for you. And then there are a lot of issues with the measurement errors. So next thing is mitral valve resistance. Mitral valve resistance, how you can calculate, you can calculate the mitral valve resistance like you are trying to measure the resistance caused by mitral stenosis okay so what how you can measure it mitral valve resistance is equal to mitral valve mean gradient okay the mean gradient you get it from the gradients divided by trans mitral diastolic flow rate how you are going to get the diastolic flow rate you can get the diastolic flow rate by stroke volume you will get the lvot stroke volume okay divided by diastolic filling period okay like you get the diastolic filling timing, the full time, the period timing and divide it to the stroke volume. Okay. And then you will get the transmitral diastolic flow rate. Okay. And just divide it with the mean gradient and you will get the mitral valve resistance. So it, let's summarize these things. If you are having a mitral stenosis patient, you need to get the valve area by 2D planimetry. You need to get the valve area by pressure half time. You can use continuity equation, but again, continuity equation is, um, you know, multiple measurements. There are chances of error and it's not valid if significant MR and AR. Then PISA method, it's technically very difficult. There are a lot of error, you know, chances of error. So it's technically very, very difficult. So uh, this is also out. Okay. The formula of uh, PISA is also here mean gradients again uh, it is dependent on heart rate and flow conditions so that's uh, again something which we need to look for there is another thing which is very important is uh, this one i uh, told you from the first thing is systolic pulmonary artery pressure we need to look to get the pulmonary artery pressure as much as the mitral stenosis will get severe your pulmonary artery systolic pressure will also increase and this gives a lot of information about the next thing like what you, you should be doing on okay so that uh, that's very important how you will get it you will get the tr signal and also the ivc and that will give you pulmonary artery systolic pressure and then uh, resistance i already told you about it so that's almost done with the with all the parameters now I will tell you about the mitral valve balloon and I also try to type the stress echo for mitral stenosis as well. Okay. In the next vlogs. Thank you very much. Keep subscribing and keep subscribing and keep watching. Thank you. Bye bye.